In this video, we're going to learn how to control or constrain the text generated by large language models using a library called Guidance. It works best with endpoint integration, and from my experiments, it does seem to work well with the Llama CPP library. Let's come over to our Jupyter Notebook, and we're going to import Guidance and a few modules from there, and then we're going to use it with a la the Mistral 7b large language model. So we're going to initialize that. And this is a GGUF file that I got from Hugging Face. So this was cre one created by the bloke. So I'll put the link to that in the description below. Now, in this video, we're going to be using Mistral 7b to detect emotions. But first, let's uh, create a function. So we're going to read a file. So I've got a bunch of files with some text in. And we'll start with the first one. So this is a post on LinkedIn by my friend Gunnar, uh, expressing excitement about uh, getting accepted for a talk at the Kafka Summit next year. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the LLM, what's the emotion of the following text? And how strong is the emotion on a scale of from 1 to 100? And so the way it works is we can take the LLM and then we can concatenate the text. So for example, here we're going to concatenate the question and then the text. And then we can also concatenate the answer. We'll sort of say we want an answer. And then we can use this function called gen and we can actually capture the result in a variable called uh, answer. So that'll be inside the, the LM uh, object. And so that's good. That, that gen function is going to generate the answer to the question. And so then if we, if we run it, it takes about a second and you can see it comes back. The emotion of the text is excitement and the strength of the emotion is 90. So Gunnar is pretty excited about this. Now, that, that obviously was free form sort of answer, but we can actually restrict the text generated using the select function. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a bunch of the most popular emotions. So happy, sad, angry, surprised, disgusted, excited, fearful, and neutral. I'm sure there are more, but I thought this was quite a good set to start with. And now we're going to adjust it slightly. So again, we're going to go LLM and then concatenate the question in the text. And again, we'll add in, we want there to be an answer, but this time, instead of using the gen function, we're gonna use the select function and we'll pass in that list of emotions. And then if we run it, it comes a bit quicker this time. It says it's happy. So it's different, it's actually interesting because this is happy rather than excited. And because we haven't given it the option to put the score, it's completely ignored the score and we've just got a result of happy. But we can actually use regular expressions to control the result generated by the gen function. And so what we'll do this time, so we're going to, again, the beginning is going to be quite familiar. We'll, we'll do the answer with the select from the range of emotions. And this time we're going to give it a scale and we'll say we want you to generate something, but it needs to be a regex that's only numbers. And so this is, it's just making sure it's numbers. So it's not actually controlling the range, but the prompt uh, is hopefully going to do that. So let's run that. And we can see it comes back again, happy and a scale of 90. I'm not entirely sure why it's not picking up, picking it up excited. Perhaps if I tried it with some variations of the word excited, it might, it might get that. We, what's cool, as I mentioned before, is that we can actually then go into that LM object and get out the emotion and the strength and use those. So that you can see it comes back with happy and 90. Another neat thing that we can do is we can put all this into a reusable components. We can make a function out of this and so we could then go and reuse it in our applications. So we're going to make a little function. So we'll use the guidance annotation. We'll call the function emotion detector. We need to pass in the LLM and then any arguments we want that we want. So in this case, the only one that's going to vary is going to be the text. We'll then put in the question. So that's going to be the same as we had before. Our list of emotions, again, the same as before. And then remember, we're going to construct the result and that's going to be the same as before. And then we'll just return the LM at the end. And now let's try it on another piece of text. So this is from an article about Jack Draper. And so it's kind of talking about his 2023 season, but then also at the end talking about how his grandma's got Alzheimer's disease and, 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 and about the gradual decline of her cognitive functioning. So let's see what it comes up with for that if we run it through that. And so you can see it prints out the, the article and then it says this is a sad uh, emotion and a scale of 70. And let's do one more. So this time it's uh, from an article uh, about with an interview with Novak Djokovic when uh, Serbia played Great Britain in the Davis Cup. It was sort of in November sometime. Uh, this time it claims that he's angry. I'm not sure if he really was angry with a scale of 80. I, I don't think he was really that angry, more just annoyed. But maybe I guess we didn't really have an irritated uh, emotion. So perhaps we should have put that in and, and see if it would pick that up. One of the other th cool things that we can do with guidance is have it generate output in JSON format. So we're going to create ourselves another function. So we'll call this one emotion detector JSON. Again, we've got the question, we've got the emotions, we'll construct the question and then the text generation. We're going to pull out the only numbers pattern into it into a variable because the next bit is going to use an F string where we're going to construct a bit of JSON. We'll then give it the raw text. We'll pass in, well, the next property is going to be the emotion and then we'll have the scale and in there we're going to use that only numbers pattern. And then at the end we return the, the LM. 
we can then call that function on a new bit of text. So this bit of text is about a, a recent football match where Everton's manager, Sean Dyche, was frustrated at a handball decision given against his team. And you can see it comes back. It gives us a JSON object with the text. We've got the emotion, which is, claims is angry, and then a scale of 80. And so this is only a subset of what you can do with the guidance library. One other cool feature that I want to look at in a future video is interleaving control and generation. Uh, and if you liked this video, you might also like this one up here, where we learn how to constrain JSON output using OpenAI functions.